Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be showing you Dawn of Peacemakers. Now don't worry, a playthrough is coming for this, but unfortunately time has meant that it's not going to come before Essen and I wanted to get something up in case you were interested to go and look at it at the fair. I think some of those are the right words. Anyway, in this game, the Ocelots and the Macaws are basically heading for war. You know, things are brewing right now and it's not looking good. And we, as concerned citizens, are trying to do our best to peacefully avert this war through, you know, whispering in people's ears and things like that. And uh, subtle sabotage, nothing too bad. Uh, we play as various, uh, various animals, and I have to highlight straight away. So here are two of the animals that come with the game. And these have been specially painted for the video and the playthrough by Ben Pearson from the Watch It Paint It channel. And I'll put a link on the screen here and in the description. You can head over to his channel and you can see videos of how he painted these. And I guess the proper detail. <laughs> it's strange doing this to a camera that's pointing down. There should be a camera in my hand, shouldn't there? But what a beautiful job. And he did this so quickly to get them in time so that I could uh, have something ready for before Essen as well. So. It, massive, massive thanks to Ben. I'm blown away by the magic that he's worked on these and definitely go over to his channel and check out how these were drawn. Anyway, sorry if you just came for the gameplay part, but you know, how cool is that? Anyway, so this is a campaign based game. We play as characters and this game has some mysteries in it as well. There were some sealed envelopes for each of our characters. I'm not going to tell you what was in those. There are also later on, you know, Sealed boxes, sealed decks, a lot of secrets in here. It's not a legacy game in the sense that you destroy anything. It can be completely reset if you would like to do that. There is a campaign deck, which is similar to the way that uh, a legacy deck works in Pandemic Legacy and things like that. But as I said, you don't destroy anything. You can reset it right the way back if you want to. So this is the first scenario set up here. I'm not going to spoil any of the story or anything like that. Our job is to basically tire both sides out. They have a level of motivation. The macaws are at six, the ocelots are at four, and you'll see the there is one more macaw on here than the ocelots. And we need to basically make their motivation go into the one to two range. If a round ends and they are both like that, then that is our ideal victory condition. That's not the only way that the game can end. If a side gets reduced to zero, they surrender, and, you know, it's it's not good for them. And it's all recorded on a campaign log, and there are many different outcomes that certain scenarios can have, and it's all going to uh, make a difference as the campaign keeps going along. So, we're all set up here with the various tiles that make the river, and the woods to hide in, the rocks to give you a bit of fortification. We each start the game with two resource cards. And we can play as many of these as we want to do actions in the game. So you can play a card for its symbols. You can draw more cards from the order decks of the enemies to see what's going on and reorder them. You can use foot symbols to move around the board because usually if you want to, like if, if I wanted to look at the Macaws cards, I need to be on a space with the Macaws to be able to, you know, hear the whisperings of their plans coming up and things like that. So you'd want to move around and be in the best position you can be. And you can spend fortification symbols to put fortification cubes down. And if a particular unit is attacked, before they take any damage, fortification cubes are removed first. You can also use a card for its ability. So there's a lot of different abilities the card could do. So this would be choose one of your companion units. Companion units are, you know, the, the macaws are the companion units here because we're stood amongst them. So choose one of them, look at the bottom card from one of its order decks and either put it on the top or back to the bottom. So we would be able to take a look, see if it works out for us right now and either put it on the top or leave it there to be sure that it's not gonna happen for quite a while. So those are the four things that you can do with your cards. You don't have to play all your cards. You can save them until your next turn. At the end of your turn, no matter how many you played, you draw back up. That's different for the number of players. In here, I've set up a two-player game, so you would draw two more cards at the end of your turn. After we've each had a turn, we would move over to the army phase where the macaws and the ocelots get to act, and hopefully we kind of know what's coming or we've had an influence over what is going to happen here. So we draw a card from each of the decks, and you see it's like, it's like a lovely little book. 
that is showing you exactly what they're going to do. Now, the left-hand card might give the unit some special power, but the most important thing is its speed. So here we have drawn normal speed and fast speed, which means that the macaws are going to be going first. So we can resolve their thing completely. So they are going to do a swift move. So before anything else happens, and if anyone else was fast, if uh, the ocelots were doing a fast strike, say, move happens first. So you do speed, speed order first, then move cover strike. And so the units in the star group move forward. There are three different types of bases for the units that were specified in the, the campaign setup, the scenario setup. So everyone in the star unit moves forward. And so they're going to move one space in the direction of their front line sign. Again, the campaign told us which direction to put this in. So everyone in the star is going to move one space forwards. As for the ocelots, they're going to cover, which isn't a great one for this round. Let's, let's, do a, let's do a better example. Let's have them do some attacking, shall we? There we go. They're going to do a bold strike. So they are going to attack with units in the hexagon group, which is uh, this one, the cog group. So first of all, we have this bold strike. So we need to roll the dice and based on the roll, adjust the d attack damage of each unit in the group until the end of the round. So they rolled a nine on the card. That is plus one to their damage for this round. If we look at the cogs. Who have we got in the cogs? An ocelot archer. You see, you know, the, these minis aren't painted, but still, look how cute they are. You know, I've never wanted uh, to paint <laughs> minis so much in any game I can remember, really. Unfortunately, I have no time and I'm terrible at painting. Shaky hands. Anyway, so we would look, so we would look at the archer. Normally does three damage. Now, because of that card, it's going to do four damage. Its range is three. It's got no defense. It's got five health. There is a cool way of prioritizing the attack. You start in the hex where the frontline symbol is pointing. So here it will be to the left of the unit. So we start here and we would go clockwise to find an enemy. We haven't found one. So we start here again, but one further out. And then we would go around in a bigger circle and bigger and bigger up to the unit's range. So here it's found one in the second circle. It's going to attack this Macaw soldier. So we know that it's doing three plus one damage. There's no special space that the Macaw is in. They have five health. So we would take four damage tokens and place them on there to show that this Macaw is very injured. Now, if in the future we deal enough damage to defeat a unit, it comes over here and that side's motivation is lowered by one. There are also cards and other effects that can make that happen. And remember, we are trying to have a delicate balance here. You know, it, since they started at six and with more units, we probably want to help out the ocelots at the beginning. But then as they start to get defeated and we play cards to lower and lower their motivation, they're at risk of surrendering and the ocelots win, which is just as bad for us. It's exactly the opposite of what we want. We want complete peace. So we would probably have to lay off the macaws and go and help the... We we'll probably have to go and help the macaws a little bit instead of the ocelots and try and get them to the nice balance of both being in the one to two range. Because after the army phase, when we just did everyone's actions here, you go to the status phase and check to see if you have met that condition or any specific conditions that apply to your particular scenario. And there are other things going on. You know, you, you can't be attacked in a stealth space unless you're next to it. These rocks provide you cover. So the first point of damage is ignored that you're taking in there. And there are different places you can go to in there. Like this, this unit here is in a tower that is giving his army a motivation. So a way for us to lower the motivation of the ocelots would be to just move him out of there. But later on, as these units advance and advance, they could end up in there. Based on the, and that has happened in our game. So they would go down and they would go up and then we need to get them out of there. But the whole game is this, uh, this lovely balance. Rather than trying to just kill everything that's out there, you are, you're trying to achieve peace. You know, I'll go into this in more detail in my proper playthrough video. But yeah, it's, it's not only is this a really enticing theme for me, that it's not just a standard war game. It's when we are actually trying to prevent a war game from being possible. And we are doing it through these, you know, one is 
one character is full of deception one character is uh, is you know just making friends with everybody and we're giving out false orders or we're giving out encouraging words to give our companions guard so they are a little bit safer from attack or this character has a lot of local contacts and can help out that way you know everything fits in with this theme really really nicely and we are seven scenarios in i believe to our campaign and yeah, I've been really impressed by the secret stuff I obviously can't tell you about, the progression of the story, and yeah, the the kind of not not complete fear, but the 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 permanence that's in the game, the fact that what we manage to do in our battle is affecting future battles, is definitely having a significant effect on what is coming in the future. Now there are times where just by virtue of maybe the shuffling of the deck or the cards that you get things can get a lot more difficult. It's not really happened very much. It's worth mentioning, though, that sometimes, as in many co-op games, just one deck isn't really working out for us and one army is just really, really gunning for it and there was nothing much that we could do. So we had to kind of accept that we're not going to get a perfect victory. What can we do to achieve the best outcome we can get? So it's not a game where you know, if you absolutely need to perfectly win every single scenario, sometimes you just can't do that. Or... You know, we, we have only played it, you know, what, 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 seven, seven times. So, you know, how experienced can I be to talk about strategy in the game? But that's just one of our first impressions from one particular scenario where we had a bit of difficulty right from the start. But overall, I've been really, really impressed so far. Not only is it gorgeous, even before they're painted, you know, the... <laughs> The, it's it's a nice charming thing that they are all animal armies anyway but the the things that you find later on in the game i'm not going to talk about but yeah really really nice exciting surprises and i am i'm a sucker for putting things in envelopes and sealed boxes and things and yeah this this game does it really really well at kind of teasing out the uh teasing out the progression of the game bit by bit scenario by scenario but this isn't everything. I'm going to do a proper playthrough for this game when I have time. Yes, <laughs> at some point there's going to be time somewhere. Time exists somewhere. Let me have some of it. And yeah, there's going to be a proper playthrough, proper final thoughts after Essen. But I wanted something up here so that hopefully, if you're going there, you can head over to the Snowdale Design booth and uh, check it out. Because yeah, I think this is something very, very different, something very, very exciting and I really, really enjoy it so far anyway. We'll see what we can get done after Essence, see how many more campaign scenarios we can play and give you the best first impressions that I can jolly well give you. Anyway, thank you for watching this. I hope this has piqued your interest somewhat and I will see you for the next game. Bye.